this Reflex 3 works kinda, sorta. It's not incredibly reliable and I'm going to strip it down and service it. But if you had a uh, Reflex 3 or a Reflex S or 4 or even a Retina 3S for that matter, you may strike a problem like this where the control rings are very, very stiff. Particularly the aperture setting, that control ring is exceedingly difficult to move, which is always a bit concerning and um, you may feel that the problem is at the top end and so that the cord is taking an undue amount of stress and is likely to snap. But most likely that's not the case. Most likely the problem lies in these front control rings and that they are simply gunked up with sticky old grease and dust and dirt. So how do you deal with that? Well you need a known reference point to put everything back together again after you take it off. So normally what I would start with is by changing my film speed here down to say ASA 10. Gosh these dials are stiff. stiff. ASA 10 and use that as my reference point. Then normally I would start with my shutter speed set to B and the aperture set to f1.9 now I've got a reference point I know my film speed I know the shutter speed dial and the aperture setting and as long as I don't fiddle with that wheel while I've got everything off the camera I'm good to go you could take note and it's possibly well worth the effort take note of the angle at which this dial sits at the top here because if you know that then you'll know that you've accidentally twiddled the wheel if it's sitting somewhere different when you come back but I think I'm good to go there so I'm going to remove these three screws take those dials off clean them put them back and see if there's a marked improvement in the action of the settings wheel I expect there will be I will start here by applying a drop of acetone to those three screw heads because by their dirty yellow colour I can tell that they've been locked in place with some lacquer and I don't want to have to fight with that so I'll let that percolate away for a few more seconds and then I'll be at these screws okay see if these will go the slots in the screws may well be full of lacquer and the screwdriver may want to jump out as a result so you may need to keep firm downward pressure on that screwdriver while you're removing the screws the screw in this position is likely to be longer than its mates. Alright, that's the three screws. And I'll lift off the control rings. So, here we've got our control rings. This is the ring that is activated through the shutter mechanism to open the aperture to full for viewing. This one sets our shutter speeds of course. This is the connection between the shutter speed and the aperture and that feels a bit sticky. And then we have our aperture setting on the front here and that doesn't feel good. That's got a return spring on it. So these pieces here, I need to clean all these now with some naphtha and then put them back. Hopefully everything's going to work much smoother. Usually I start here. And I'm wanting to gather up all the dust and grit, dried out grease and rubbish that's got down in here.
be careful of that spring if you put a twist in it or damage it in any way it won't run smoothly but it's not enthusiastic to unhook from that little locator post so I don't usually remove it unless I desperately need to That's looking much better. Just checking that this little pinion here moves freely. Certainly appears to be good. I think we'll call that section done. This piece, which is our aperture settings ring. This was pretty reluctant to move. So it's likely it's a bit grimy, you can see it there. Now sometimes these will have been lubricated with graphite grease or something at some stage in the past. And that probably worked very nicely when it was freshly put on there. But it just is a magnet for dust. Eventually your lubricant turns into a grinding paste. To pay particular attention to these outside surfaces front and back. Alright, that looks good. This one, this brass ring, this is often quite sticky. Um, some of this is corrosion, I would think. You can tell by the colour, it's not quite natural looking. And sometimes, if there's been any moisture get in here, you actually see discoloration from corrosion, and that's best polished away with brasso or something. I'm just running around that top surface there. Same on the other side. And the inside. Now that little wheel needs to move freely, so if there's any undue stiffness there, you may need to flush that out with some naphtha as well. That appears to move freely enough for me. Okay, I think we'll call that component good. The shutter speed settings ring. So just the same deal really, making sure it's clean and free from grease and dust and dirt inside and out, that's pretty grimy. Now these little plastic pads here for turning the shutter speed, it's not uncommon for them to be cracked. Typically if you slightly loosen the screws, put a drop of super glue, uh, cyanoacrylate in there and tighten the screws up again, you'll find that that plastic bonds together very well. Um, no problem at all.
unless there's a piece missing and you've only got half of one or you haven't got one at all I wouldn't bother hunting for a parts camera looking for a good replacement chances are any replacement you find has also got a crack this one unusually doesn't appear to be cracked watch out for solvent on that plastic too naphtha appears to be okay but don't use anything more volatile than that or you'll find that uh, you lose your nice shiny plastic and the last piece of the puzzle here is this ring which opens the aperture on the lens opens the diaphragm up to full aperture when the shutter is cocked to allow for viewing okay so those pieces are good what about the camera body the front of the shutter here well I'm going to clean that Okay, that looks quite good. So you may feel that you might have accidentally disturbed your shutter speed setting while you've been cleaning it. I'll zoom you in a bit. This tab here is our shutter speed setting and at the bottom there, that bottom position, that's B. So that's where it should be at this stage. Now making sure we haven't twiddled with the wheel or moved anything here now meters is exactly where we started off we're good to start putting things back together well I've got to assemble these two pieces together first this has a little hook on it and the hook hooks up to the spring like so Now stretching that out very slightly you'll find that you can get the tab of this ring to drop into the slot and this is all nicely trapped now. The action of this isn't as smooth as I'd like and they never are. I usually put a bit of graphite powder in there. This is the one that we can get at the hardware shops here. You probably find something like that wherever you happen to be. Anyway I've got a little bit here loosen the container because you always end up with graphite powder everywhere but where you need it and what I do is I just drop a bit into the base of that and work that mechanism backwards and forwards and it'll probably feel a little bit gritty at first that's quite normal now I'll go and blow out all that excess powder Well that seems to work quite smoothly now. Now this piece. Normally I just take some molybdenum paste and I just wipe around the outside surface, around the inside surface, on the top and on the bottom. And if it looks like I'm not really putting much there, well you'd be right. You need very little of this. So just a a hint of it does a wonderful job. This brass ring goes on. There's a notch here on the brass ring to help you get it over that wheel, that little pinion. So get that on there. It should fit down square. And we want this thing aligned around here. I'll zoom you in a bit. There's a little notch here in the aluminium and we want the end of our track in the brass up against the outside of that notch there. Okay, so here we've got the, pin, the wheel that uh, opens the aperture to full aperture. 
for viewing and I'm just wiping that front surface and the inside and the outside edge with some molybdenum paste and again that's pretty much invisible that drops in there now the alignment here is that the third tooth on this rack should be in line with the center of the pinion get this back where it should be you can see I've got a gap here of about uh, two millimeters I'd say a millimeter and a half anyway last piece of the puzzle is this one now this has to engage the shutter speed setting tab on the camera and this little notch here is where it engages it but this little ramp next to the notch is where it has to be able to disconnect and reconnect at the B setting end of the scale so I put a wipe of molybdenum paste down there there are two ways of achieving this I'll show you both of them the first is to assemble this all of a piece making sure our notches aligned there as previously mentioned we want B and F1.9 aligned here checking that that's still the case their notch wasn't quite right and I'm half a stop out here move that across that looks good okay so everything's aligned there my little wheel here the that center wheel is good my shutter speed is set to B still and I'm going to lift this into place and if I give it a wiggle it drops on over the tab at B everything else is good I've got my gap up at the top here and it's all looking good so I'll put my three screws in the two shorter ones one goes to the top one goes here the longer screw goes in this position right let's see how it goes I can change my shutter speeds my aperture setting that light catches us badly doesn't it you can see that that moves nice and smoothly now so our apparent problem with the stiff dials has gone completely as a result of uh, taking off those front rings and servicing them now what, what about the other method of getting that together that one went together very smoothly they don't always go together as smoothly as that so if you weren't able to get the shutter speed settings ring to couple to the shutter correctly that's not uncommon it very much depends on the the exact shape of the tab it's supposed to connect to that's a springy piece of metal and some of them are just in slightly slightly further out than the other ones that's quite normal and uh, that's not a matter of great concern but how do you overcome a problem like that all right so we'll just take this lot off If you're unable to get that shutter speed dial in place the best answer is to put it on the, the camera first you can see exactly where that tab engages there so that's at the B setting and taking this piece put this piece back in place 
check the alignment and taking the camera with the shutter speed setting ring on it this time put the front rings in place you may need to give this a wriggle to get everything to seat This one's not seating for me. Probably this ring's not coupling to the pinion correctly. Or the... This had moved possibly. Let's go back where we were. Head on back on B, get this piece together, pop that in place, you got a lot of moving parts here so things will fall out of position with monotonous regularity. No, it's still not seating. Not sure why that should be. Let's just try it without that piece for the moment. I'm not sure where my problem lies. It's the coupling of the wheels here, I think, that the problem lay at. Nothing else is in the way. My brass ring here is not seated correctly. Let's try this again. That time, that time everything fell into place. B F 1.9, ring in the right, correct place up here. I'll put my three screws in. Shutter speeds, aperture, that's it. So that, that was, that's how you can uh, overcome problems with stiff control rings on the front of a Retina Reflex 3, Reflex S4 or Retina 3S camera. Usually the problem lies in the front rings, usually it's dried out grease, dust and dirt, rubbish of that nature. Of course there are other con contributing components to the smooth operation of that whole business, but um, you can only see them by pulling the entire camera apart. But in the main, your main problems are going to lie here. 
and now that's acceptably smooth and uh, if that had been your only problem with the camera it would all be now back in operation and good to go. Thanks for watching.